on this afternoon, I will be coming from uh, the topic. Just, I'm just going to give you a brief uh, introduction. Pastor Rafford is doing a series called I Belong Here. I am not part of the series, but I will be in the vein of the series. So you can take a pause from last week and you'll be able to pick back up next week when he comes back to continue I Belong Here. But I promise you I will not stray too far from I Belong Here. So it will be in the same, in the same vein. But the topic uh, is GPS, God's position and system. And our opening scripture, you do not have to stand today. Our opening scripture will be Psalms, the 119th division, and verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And the reason why I chose to come from here, because I will be talking about a GPS, about a positioning system. And a lot of times we get sidetracked or we get uh, confused because we're going in the wrong direction. We're fighting against the lights a lot of times. We're fighting against the arrows. Sometimes there's nothing uh, more confusing when you're going down one way and you see somebody coming against traffic and it's because either one, they weren't paying attention. Sometimes, it's kind of crazy, sometimes streets change. We know things to always operate one way, so we get used to going that way, and out of nowhere, it'll become a one way. So as the next thing you know, you're operating against the flow of traffic, which means you're going the wrong direction. Yes. And a GPS system really stands for Global Positioning System in the natural sense. And it provides a sense of direction. Not only does it provide a sense of direction, it also can track where you're going and also where you have been. And here, nationally, how we use our GPS system, it is satellites that are set up uh, in the orbit, you know, in the uh, space. And it is a series of satellites and the signals bounce off each other. And the signal can be reached anywhere in Earth or the surrounding areas of space close to Earth. So I got interested because what made it stand out so much to me was that not only is it giving the opportunity for us to find out where we're going, it also can track where we've been. And a lot of times we get it really confused because we don't like to backtrack or we don't like people to know different, anyway, you don't like people to know your life story. But it's okay because the GPS, the God's position system, he already knows everywhere you're gonna go anyway. Any mistake you was gonna make, everything has already been pre-designed. Yeah. So you look at things as like a mistake, but God has already ordained this for you. So never be ashamed to testify, I will get to that later, never be ashamed to testify about where your GPS has been. A few things that the GPS is used for, it's used for uh, the arrival time, give you a, uh, an accurate arrival of time. It also can give you a route that you can use to get to your destination. And it also will let you know when you have come to the correct destination. And a lot of times, um, there are many different versions now of GPS, some more advanced than others. And that is just like the kingdom of God. What I mean by that is, there are many churches. There are many teachings. There are many different people who may influence you. But there are only certain things that are more advanced than others that will get you to the correct destination of where you are supposed to be. And what I mean by that is, a lot of times we are places that really don't have the advancement that we need to get to the position where we need to be used. Wow. And Pastor Raffer talked about that last week. There's nothing worse than being in a wrong place where you cannot be, um, all your gifts and all your talents can't be used to the best of their abilities, which means your growth gets stifled. And so when you have stifled growth, you either want to get frustrated or you return to your life of sin or you backtrack, you backslide. Because anything that is not going forward will go back. And if you would turn to, well, let me backtrack. The way of the Lord, he will light the path and he will give you directions of which way to go. 
And the way of the Lord has light. It is not, there's no darkness in it. And what I mean by that is, if you are using your GPS, and I feel like all of us are pretty advanced, but any of us who do not use it, when you're using the GPS, it is, it'll have different paths around you, or it'll have different routes or different streets, but the street that you are supposed to be on, the way is lit. And that is just like how it is with the kingdom of God. The direction that you are supposed to be going, God will light it for you. You will not be confused about which way to go because he will have different signals to let you know you are going down the right path. He will have different things to let you know, hey, me over here, this is where you're supposed to be. And a lot of times we get uh, confused or what's so crazy about the GPS is when you're going and sometimes you feel like you get real familiar yeah. with your direction. So you feel like, oh, I need to stay on this street for a long time so I don't have to look at any directions. And there is nothing worse than when you hear um, GPS now rewriting. <laughs> Uh -huh. GPS now rewriting. And what that means is you have gone past the point of where you are supposed to be, or you have missed your destination, or you have missed the turn that you were supposed to go on. And what I mean by that is you have to be conscious of the ways that you are going. And when I say light, the definition of light is the form of energy that makes it possible to see things, the brightness produced by the sun, by fire, a lamp, etc. So there will be things that will light up the way that you are supposed to go. Uh, when you have seen the light, please walk in it. Yeah. When your direction has been lit, please walk in it. And if you will turn to Ephesians chapter 8 and verse 8. For ye were sometimes in darkness, but now ye are light in the world. Walk as children of the light. And what that means is you, you once were in darkness. And what's so funny is just a brief story. I thought it was a true talent as a kid. Mind you, I said as a kid, as a child. To be able to see in dark. And what that means is I would turn off all the lights in the house and I would walk around to see if I would get to my destination without bumping my toes, stepping over something, and out without trying to feel on the wall. And what is crazy is I never quite made it because I, I went there with my sense. I didn't have the sense of touch so much or the sense of hearing because I had the ability to see. And sometimes you play with yourself because you have the light and you have seen the light, but you want to stay in darkness. You fight against the ability to walk in the light. And a lot of times when the light has been lit, you see things that may not be familiar to you in darkness. Yeah. And sometimes you get scared because you feel like you've learned your way. And what I mean by darkness, I mean your, your sinful state. Well, well, well. And a lot of times we fight against really hard coming, getting out of that situation or being, um, when the Lord has lit the path for us, we keep, we have the nerve or the audacity to tell the Lord, oh, I really don't want to do that. Or oh, I really don't have to go there. Or I really don't need to go that much. Or I really got to pray that much. You, you start doing a lot of questions. Yeah. Now, how can you ask questions when you was asking for help? There is nothing more irritating when someone asks you in the natural for direction and you give them direction, but they tell you that's not what you're supposed to do. You ask me. So how are you going to tell me what you're not supposed to do or which way you're not supposed to go? So that is just like how it is with the kingdom of heaven. You can't tell the Lord I don't have to or I don't want to when you have cried and you have prayed and you have asked him for deliverance and deliverance came showing you which way to go. So please, in all you do, do not walk against the light or do not fight against walking in the light. And yes, while you're, uh, when you come to the light, people who have not yet come to the light or can identify will title you many things. Anything negative that has to do with the word different, that is what you will be called. But you have to be comfortable because eventually they will see the difference. And if you stick it out, that will encourage them. Once they see the change, that will encourage them to come aboard with you. And sometimes, yes, you might even get 
discouraged in that, but never give up. Never doubt God. Never, when you've given the, uh, when you've been given the chance to make a difference, yeah. continue in that difference. No matter who's on your team, no matter who supports you, no matter who believes in you. Yeah. If you, if you have the blessing of the Lord with you, He will open up every way. He will provide everything. No matter about who doubts you. And a lot of times you really get caught up in I don't have the support of my loved ones. Or, I don't have the support with the people I grew up with. Or I don't even have the support with the people who I thought were my real friends. Well, sometimes with that, when you have when the light comes on, you'll be able to see things and the Lord will reveal things to you that you maybe didn't really understand or see before. And it is okay for change. It is okay for change. It is okay. Because sometimes, like I told you, when you're going a certain way and you have been used to going that way, uh, rules do change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rules change. Yeah. And the, the one thing that the church is having a hard time with, and I tell you, uh, just I grew up in a traditional Baptist church and then I went to a traditional Pentecostal church. And one thing in both situations, they had a real hard time with the way of dress. They had a real hard time with you coming to the temple looking any kind of way. And I told my mother, even in the holiness church, male or female, you got corrected. It didn't matter if your pants was too tight. It didn't matter if your skirt was too tight. Your shirt was too tight. Everything, something was wrong with everything. But I understood, I, I do understood, understand what they was trying to get you to do and how they were trying to get you to present yourself. Because a lot of times what people see is what they will think of you. Yeah. 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 So, but the rules some kind of have changed over the years. And what I mean by that is, it's not so much of getting so dressed up to come before the Lord. Because we had that so down pat, the Lord actually had to shake things up a little bit. Because we had the form of godliness, but we denied the power thereof. And that is, a, that is scripture. And what I mean by that is, we had the look down pat. But we had the rules down packed. We had all the churchiness down packed, but we were not exuding the true power or we did not have the true relationship with God. What do I mean by that? Because we were disconnected from the homeless. We were disconnected from the hurting. We were disconnected from the community. And what I, you know, and the church is not centered in a location just for you to come and be there on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Thursday, whatever A central location for you to meet. Yeah, yeah. It is meant for their if, uh, it's a place of refuge. Yeah. But it's not only a place of refuge for those who know Jesus. Yeah. If you have a light and Jesus has shined on you and you are telling people that Jesus saves and Jesus heals, they need to find a place to where to come yeah. to find help. Yeah, right, yeah, right. And with the disconnect, so many times people will get there and they will leave disappointed yeah. because we was just dressed up having a good time. Yeah. And we really weren't offering hope. We really weren't um, praying for people. If we were praying for people, it was just to do it. We really weren't, you know, excited about the prayer or excited about the person's deliverance or excited about seeing God, you know, being shown to them and whatever the situation may be. And just for a testimony, I left the church I grew up in because one time I was singing in a choir and I witnessed a lady be healed before my eyes. We were in Akron, Ohio, and we had got done singing, and the lady's legs had swelled up real, real bad. She wasn't a big lady, just an average sized lady. And both of her legs swelled up real, real big. And so, this was my first time even being in this tub, kind of surrounding. And after her legs swelled up, we all gathered around. And the leader of the choir at the time was Pastor uh, Elder Washington, who was a local pastor in Lexington. And he began to call on the name of Jesus. And along with the other people who were in there, began to call on the name of Jesus. And I tell you the truth before God. If he was standing beside me, I promise you, nothing would happen to me. You know, we say, Lord, strike me down. But nothing would happen to me. Her legs began, began to deflate like balloons. Like you watch the air leave out of a balloon is how her legs begin to deflate. And she was able to stand up and 
get on the bus, the tour bus that we was on, and return with no swelling as we get back home. And Akron is a few hours away. And so when I saw that, I said, wait a minute. There's some things that I'm witnessing that I haven't witnessed before. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to be a part of that. So with no questions, nothing. my mom is here today. She can testify. No, it didn't go over great at first. But my parents can testify with no questions, no consulting, no wondering. I was out of there. I was gone. And the reason why is because as a young man, when you read your Bible, and you see the, uh, the scripture where it says signs and wonders shall follow them. And I saw the signs and I saw the wonders and I had never seen that before. So I knew I was going to the right place because the action was there and it was visible before my eyes. And what I mean by that is the way had been lit for me. Yes, there were some things that came against that, but even in that, I never, I'm not saying nothing's wrong with where I came from. But for me, my dad the path that I needed to go on. So I, when, the, when my path was lit, I went that way and I never turned back. And what I mean by that is, yes, you know, it kind of broke up the dynamic for a little while and nobody understood and yes, it hurt my parents' feelings. And I understand as a grown man now, you know, because it kind of broke up, you know, the, what we call traditional. What I mean by that is we all get up in the morning together, we all get dressed together, we all leave in the same car, we all go to the same church. You know, and sometimes you might even all sit together. Now, we didn't go that far, but you know, sometimes you might all sit together and all those things and what we have become known to society as the perfect family or the perfect situation, at least from what I can see. And sometimes we get so caught up in stuff like that that when the light comes, we're hesitant. Yeah, all right. When the way has been lit, we're hesitant because it goes against sometimes everything that you know or everything that you could identify with. So let me encourage you. If the when this is one way you know the light has been lit. Because everything that you thought that you was once prosperous in, every way that you once knew in the back of your head you could stand on, a lot of the times that will become obsolete. That's right. Those things will not even matter anymore. And what's so funny is when I told you the game I used to play when you when I used to turn off the lights, or then when have you ever noticed when you turn them back on real quick, your eyes can't even handle it? When you sit in a dark place and the lights come on, your, your eyes have to adjust. So the same is the uh, situation if you are in light and you try to return to darkness. You can't do it real quick. You cannot just think, oh, I'm going to jump right back in. And what's so crazy is, in a worldly sense, you have missed some things. So sometimes when you try to go back to the area that you once identified with, you don't even fit in anyway. You don't even fit in, and there's nothing worse. Now, I'm not coming against people dancing or whatever, but one example I can give you is, when say you was, you was a dancer in the club. You knew, you knew it. Couldn't a dance come past that you did not know? And then, you know, you, you, you stop dancing for a while. And you're not going, and you're like, oh, I'm going to go back and jump back in, and I still can. And there is nothing worse than you on the dance floor, sweating. I'm talking about you, you think, you think, you are working it out. In the meantime, people are like, no. 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 We, we stopped doing that one. <laughs> Actually, we don't even dance that hard. Anymore. And so, that is how it is in the kingdom. Because sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm, okay, I'm delighted. You know, I'm going to go back and do the things I used to do. You have to adjust to that. And a lot of times, you've got to play catch up to get to doing wrong. How much sense does that make? to make a mistake. So there is no use. Once the light has been shined, that is why you should stay in it. Because it's not even 
healthy for your vision to keep playing and going back and forth from darkness to light. It's not even healthy. Yeah. 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 And you know, there is no, just, just stay in it. That's what I'm telling you, just stay in the light. We're, I don't even have to keep going through, you know, don't go back and forth because uh, there's a scripture in the Old Testament where it says only a dog returns to its vomit. Yeah. And that is equivalent to you once you've been enlightened that you return into darkness. And nobody wants, once you have the, you, you know, we all seen vomit as something gross or something that the body is trying to get rid of. And there, there is nothing, you know, it's not even appealing to watch on TV to see somebody with vomit on them, let alone eating it or eating anything that you could reference to that. So that is what sin is like. That is what darkness is like. Your body has gotten rid of, has, you know, you got rid of that out of your system. So there's no use of you trying to, you know, get it back in your system. No use of you trying to fight and resist and uh, keep, as we say, kicking against the pricks to keep uh, wanting to stay in darkness. Um, if you would turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Thank you. Again, it's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run the patience, excuse me, run with patience the race that is set before us. And I t I'm telling you this because uh, and while you're on this journey, when your way has been lit, there are people here to help you. There are people who have already gone through just about anything that you can imagine in your life. Those are what we are, we are considered witnesses. Those are the cloud of witnesses that here on earth that are, have surrounded you that you're able to ask for help. And in Revelation chapter 12, I'm not going to be before you long, in Revelation chapter 12 and 11, if you would go there please, and they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. And I'm saying this because it says we have over, well, we overcome him. Him is the adversary, is the devil, and he has been overcome already by the blood of Jesus, but the other to overcome is our testimony. Yes. That is the current action that will help us to overcome. And what I mean by all of this in the GP, God's positioning system, when you are in the right place, the testimonies will help to encourage you to know that you are in the right place and you are hearing what you need to hear through the word of God or through the testimony of the people that are surrounding you. Yes. And some of you literally are one testimony away from being in the right place, yeah. from your GPS going off to let you know that you are in the right location. And I am saying to you, your, the testimony is through the word of God, through you hearing that you can make it, through you hearing that you are not the only one, yeah. through you hearing that God is a deliverer, through you hearing that God is a keeper, through you hearing that God can rectify any situation in your life. Somebody may think because our testimony 
is someone is dependent on that. Right. Someone needs to hear the love of God. And I'm not saying we're about to have to start having testimony service. Then. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying on a one-on-one -on -one basis. When you are talking to people, know how to tell people. Yes, I, I mean, I'm, it might sound superficial, but yes, I, um, for example, one testimony. Yes, I was working very hard for the state. And a budget crisis came in the United States, United States of America. And I got, my job was just canceled. My job was X'd out. But I, no write-ups, nobody, and I worked for the court system. And even some of the Supreme Court judges knew who I was, and I didn't know who they was. So to me, you know, my supervisors told me I was great. I was even on the move up to becoming a supervisor. I was one step away from becoming a supervisor. I went out of town, I came home, my box was sitting in my room. And so, yes, I kept loving the Lord. Yes, I got confused. Yes, I was kind of upset because I was working hard. I was at the ministry where I came from. I was very active. You know, I didn't cause my pastors no problems, anything needed to. You know, I was a worker. I did everything that I thought I was supposed to do or I knew to do. And yet, I was jobless. But... When the Lord worked it out for me, I received a better job, getting paid double, doing a fraction of what I was doing before. So what I'm saying is, yes, it may look dark, but if you continue to trust God, the way has been lit. And what I meant by that, I didn't go back. And yes, I had the opportunity to go back, but I would have had to take a job making less money and traveling, and they wasn't going to pay me to travel. What they do. So when my way got lit, I promise you I did not look back. <laughs> so when I say, when the scripture says that we have been, he, uh, excuse me, and they overcome him by the blood of the lamb, Jesus paid the price. Yes, yes. Jesus has already, already paid the price. But like I said, the second part of that is us helping the price that has been paid. No, he doesn't need our help, but it helps to overcome. It just says it right here, it's plain as day. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Which means you have to speak of the goodness of God. You personally have to testify to the goodness of God and to the glory of God. You personally have to give an account for the things that God has done for you. And that will open up the way for people. That will encourage people. So be encouraged to know that you are in God's position and system. God's GPS is ultimate. He doesn't make any mistakes. Everywhere he directs you to go, please have faith in that and know he is not sending you that way aimlessly. He is not sending you that way so you can just take a stroll in a park. Any way God sends you, it is for you to learn. It is for something to be instilled in you. It is for you to grow. It is for you to be encouraged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am not a hooper. So if you are waiting on that, I am so sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Discouraged, please never give up hope. Always look for the light. And once you see the light, please walk in that light. Yeah. Yeah. Please walk in that light.